So the mini set for Stormwind has finally arrived, and there are 12 new achievements to hunt down. While we are still planning to do a fully tailored video of the mini set edition of our Achievement Hunter series, it'll take a while to put together. So for those of you looking for decks to knock out the achievements quickly, we've got this quick overview to give you a head start. Let's get into it. Huh, this should be interesting. In this video, we're introducing one deck per achievement, and we won't be covering them in nearly as much depth as we do in our main guides. We haven't completed all the achievements ourselves yet, but each of these should gain progress towards the achievement once bugs have been corrected. Hunter achievement, we're looking at you. Whether they'll make the cut in our official guide or not has yet to be determined, but we will include wild deck options and some more fun or wacky decks in that one. So you can look forward to that in a couple weeks. Just like with our regular guides, there are timestamps for each achievement and deck codes for each deck mentioned in the description below in case you'd like to jump to one you're looking for. We'll go through the achievements in order, starting now. First up is Even Playing Field. Both our minions have to survive the Proving Grounds, so if we make sure all the minions in our deck have more health than the attack of any of the others, we'll get progress each time we play it. Unfortunately, although Imprisoned Antion does survive the Proving Grounds, he doesn't give progress, so we cut him from the deck. However, there are some cool synergies with Frenzy, Lifesteal, and cheap spells we can capitalize on with the high health, low attack minions included in this deck. So it's still quite fun to play. Good luck evening out the playing field. For Druid, we've got Por Que No Los Dos, where we need to play Jerry Rig Carpenter in a deck with several choose one spells. We'll test Keeper Stelladris later to see if he counts, but based on the wording, it probably has to be Jerry Rig Carpenter. Since she only works with spells, our options in standard are quite limited. A token deck might be the fastest, and a celestial alignment deck might be more busted, but we settled on Feral Rage and Nourish in a fun questline deck for this one. If you frequently draw the last of your choose one cards before the second carpenter, so the soil or power of the wild aren't terrible to slot in. Enjoy eating your cake and having it too. Hunters have an interesting achievement. At least, I think it's interesting, but at the time of writing the script for this, Carry On My Wayward Son seems to be bugged, since even repeating multiple different death rattles which triggered in a single game doesn't give any progress. We somehow got one progress on this after triggering death rattles of about eight unique minions with multiple different triggers per game for several games. But assuming this means we need to repeat the death rattles of 16 different minions using Monstrous Parrot once it's fixed, any deck with a few different death rattles and Monstrous Parrots will work. This list runs four different death rattle minions, which once we get the credit for the ones repeated, we can swap out with different death rattle minions for the parrot to repeat. If this one doesn't work the way we're assuming even after a bug fix, we'll approach it as necessary in our official guide. If you figured out a way to complete this one as it is right now, please share in the comments. And that's where we're leaving this one for now. Summoning a 12-12 or bigger Arcane Remnant isn't too difficult if you've got enough spell damage sticking to the board. We completed this in our second game with this spell damage deck thanks to an early draw of an Imprisoned Phoenix and an additional copy from the Primordial Studies. We've got a couple 1 mana 1 health minions to target if the opponent doesn't play something small for you, but you almost certainly will need help from a Phoenix or two to boost the damage of Arcane Overflow to 13 damage or more. The deck won't win much, but it's not bad for a one and done. Best of luck making massive leftovers. Paladin's Robin Hood is also a one and done. For this one, we just took a hand buff Paladin from HS Replay and tossed the Wealth Redistributors in place of Underlight Angling Rods. If you have a Dude, Righteous Protector, or Knight of Anointment on board, an 11 attack minion on board will do the trick. 
you can make your own massive minion to redistribute with Blessing of Authority and or Convictions. By the way, a Sunwing Squawker which casts Blessing of Authority on itself will go to 11 attack, meaning if there's a 1 attack minion on board, Squawker into Redistributor will complete the achievement, even if the 1 attack minion is the opponent's. Have fun playing Robin Hood. Initially, I thought should have seen this coming was going to be very difficult because our opponent doesn't have to give you a good card which you could kill them with when you play Copycat. Then I realized that Psychic Conjurer, Soothsayer's Caravan, Mindrinder Lucia, The Nameless One, Keymaster Alabaster, and Soul Mirror all also give you cards copied from the opponent which you could use to kill them. So. Here's a deck including all of those cards alongside Copycat, aimed at cycling into our resources and controlling the board with a little extra pressure from Mr. Smite until we can kill them with one of the dozen or so cards we copy from them. You'll still have to be clever to figure out how to use what you get to take them down, but you'll have quite a few options with this deck. Now, priests aren't the only ones at least partially reliant on the opponent's choices for how easy the achievement will be to complete. The rogue achievement will go a lot easier with an opponent who plays along. Or if you play along, if you see an opponent play parlay, since you both get credit for it. Even if the opponent doesn't play along, it's still possible to pull this off with help from Educated Elik and extra copies generated by Wandmaker, but it'll be a much tougher fight. If you go for this in Wild, Augmented Elix can make Educated Elix parlay shuffles a bit more rewarding. Hopefully you'll find an opponent willing to parlay before you educate opponents about a heavily tanked MMR. Using Sucker Hook to get a legendary weapon may prove quite the challenge for shamans, as we can't transform a weapon into Sphere of Sapience, and the only other legendary weapons in standard are Bulwark of Azanoth and Rinling's Rifle. There are quite a few weapons competing for that transformation at 3 and 4 mana. You may actually be better off playing Questline Warrior in hopes of summoning Sucker Hook from the Juggernaut to transform your random weapons over and over. But if you do go after this in standard with Shaman, this elemental Shaman with a Rune Dagger instead of a Wackanol Hammer can give you several extra chances per game at transforming into a legendary weapon. With this deck, you're aiming at one of the 12 3 mana weapons and one of the 10 4 mana weapons. We'll definitely be looking to cover a deck in Wild for this in our more comprehensive guide, since if you can keep a 5 mana weapon going, you've got a 2 in 4 chance at 6 mana, a 1 in 6 chance at 7 mana, and a 2 in 3 chance at 8 mana of getting a legendary weapon. So your chances in Wild are much better if you can stay alive and keep Sucker Hook alive that long. Best of luck reeling in a legendary transformation. For who ordered imps, it's necessary to trade and draw a copy of Wicked Shipment three times before playing it onto your board. That's why we only ran one copy in a Zoo Warlock and a little heavier than usual draw engine. It's unfortunate that we couldn't include Mr. Smite, but keeping Nightshade Matron into Hand of Gul'dan quick and reliable was worth it, as we completed this achievement during game 3 with this deck. Enjoy flooding the board with mischievous imps. So we didn't know about this achievement when crafting our day one decks released on Tuesday, but the Thor's Hammer Pirate Warrior we introduced there is great for knocking out this achievement, since Questline Stage 1 draws it at 1 durability, tossing it away twice adds 4 more durability, and 2 Corsair Caches give it an additional 2 durability meaning once our third weapon tutor is complete, we've got a 7 durability weapon. Add a couple nitro boost poisons, and you may not want to play Rakara so that you can melt your opponent with a 9-7 weapon. Have fun completely hammering down your opponent. Although mages now have shadow spells available, no class naturally has spells from 5 different schools in standard. 
Rogue and Shaman surprisingly have a hand in five different schools with a few wild cards. So that is an option if you want consistency. Though based on the wording of the achievement, double battle cry effects in wild may make this a breeze. But in standard, we have to copy or transform spells from the missing schools to get to a fifth spell school. Rogue could do that with Plagiarize, among other options. Priest could do that with Elusia, the Caravan, or Copycat. But the most wide-reaching option would have to be Deck of Lunacy in Mage to generate a card from the last spell school or two needed, if you don't want to wait for the Mask of Cthune. We haven't been able to confirm this yet, but even if you don't have five cards left in your deck to draw, playing Multicaster when it should draw five should complete the achievement, as the conditions are essentially the same for the draw achievement with Sage in Darkmoon. When doing a quick test game with this deck, we generated a Shadow and Holy spell from Lunacy, allowing us to complete this one outright. The real challenge was remembering how many different spell school spells we had cast already, so good luck keeping track in your own game, and best of luck drawing a ton at once with Multicaster. And finally, Sneed's new shredder demands we destroy 100 minions with Goliath. Sadly, Brilliant Macaw repeating Sneed's battle cry doesn't seem to count so it seems your only hope is to play his masterpiece a bunch. In Wild, doubling his battle cry and additional discounts may help, but it's actually not too difficult to play 1-3 to three copies of Goliath per game with this deck. Since the mech pool is fairly limited, Deepron Engineer can often discover an extra copy of him. Insight can help draw him from the deck and discount him, and Raise Dead can help bring him back. We realized we had a fairly reliable early mana curve, so we decided to run the quest line as well to draw an extra card or two as we control the board till Goliath comes down. And it is entirely possible to complete the quest line and destroy the opponent with the shard if your opponent isn't running Mutanus, which a surprising number of warriors, even quest ones, and priests have been. So this one will take quite a while, but it is kind of fun to blast the enemy minions with rockets you control, so have fun with it. And that's a wrap. If you found this helpful, drop a like. As this is a quick and dirty version, we don't really have any fun puns for the outro this time. But liking helps us a lot, and subscribing will help ensure you don't miss the full version of the mini set guide and all the fun highlights we'll have with wacky off-meta decks coming soon. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy participating in experiments live, check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash ssalchemist. We currently stream on Saturdays and Sundays. And remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day.